here. Bring that down and there we go. Pull that up in so we can actually see what I'm doing. Hey, Bonnie. Uh, let's see, my computer. Anyway, maybe it'll pull up. We'll see. Hopefully it'll pull in there. Okay, so anyway, today I was gonna talk about, uh, and thanks to all those that are signing in right now. If you're new to the broadcast, um, put a one in the chat box and tell me where you're from. Uh, hello, is it, uh, I, I can't see the screen when it's that far away. It, it should hopefully start pulling up here. Is it Gian or, oops, if I can get my screens to work. Uh, Gian, uh, Mr. Tudball. Hey guys, how are you? And it looks like Paris, uh, Facebook Live is starting up. So I've got Facebook here and I've got Periscope here. Um, my name is Dr. Adam Nally. I'm a board certified family physician and a board certified obesity medicine specialist to you. Coming, coming to you live from um, Surprise, Arizona. It's the end of, end of my mor Monday morning uh, or Monday. It's, it's been a long Monday. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, had some some difficult, challenging cases in the office today. Um, but I thought I would uh, do the uh, a short little Periscope in regards to the, this is part number 17, I'm sorry, part number 18 of uh, why be in ketosis. We're going to talk about pre and probiotics and how a ketogenic lifestyle helps that. Hey, Rhonda. Hey, Sally. Um, so number one, and I'm going to, I'm going to pull this screen up so I can actually see what I'm doing here. Uh, number one, healthy uh, guts. Well, if, let me back up. Our gut, our, our intestines contain um, possibly up to a, a 1,200 different species of bacteria. Now, one person usually contains about 160 specific species, and there'll be thousands and thousands and thousands of bacteria that, that are there in those species. And the predominant species are the Bacteroides species and the Firmicula species, which um, are two of the predominant ones, but there are up, up to 160 different species of, of bacteria. Now, why is this important, and why would you want to know about your the bacteria in your gut? And why do people even study it? Um, because th this bacteria helps you gain fuel and does some really important things. Number one, um, it uh, a healthy gut microbiome. Um, these bacteria break down longer chain um, fibers and turn them into butyrate uh, and also can use beta hydroxybutyrate. These are short chain fatty acids. Now, short chain fatty acids have an, an, an amazing property. Number one, they help the immune system be more efficient. And number two, um, there's evidence now showing that these short chain fatty acids actually help prevent um, tumor formation in the cells of the body. And so having a balanced microbiome is actually very important to your immune system and to your ability to prevent cancer formation and things of that nature. And that's what we're learning. Now we're on the cutting edge of this and it's brand new stuff that we're learning, but it's important to understand. So how does that relate to a ketogenic lifestyle? Well, one of the things we know is when a person's in a ketogenic state, um, they, they begin to balance out this microbiome more effectively. And what we see is the predominance of the bacteroides and the firmicutes, uh bacteria go up and the other bacteria that can be harmful or pro cause problems with leaky gut and things of that nature actually begin to go down. Now, uh, you, people say, well, you're just eating a bunch of fat. Well, the key is long chain and medium chain fats help to drive the process of formation of these important gut bacteria. Second, is that a ketogenic lifestyle is gonna contain foods that are both prebiotic and probiotic in nature. Now, what's a prebiotic? A prebiotic is basically the house that the bacteria lives in, and a probiotic is the actual uh, bacteria that it's present. Um, we gain these probiotics from, from breastfeeding from our mother when we're children. So a breastfed baby is actually getting these bacteria through the, breast, the breastfeeding process. Um, second is that we uh, it's, it starts at birth, and that's where it be, occurs. Leafy greens have the long chain oligosaccharide that, that, that creates the house for the bacteria uh, to live in, number, number two. Uh, and then foods that can contain algae like cheese and sour cream, which is a staple of my ketogenic lifestyle. Um, seaweed, which is a, a form of, of a prebiotic, which is wonderful for to house um, your bacteria. So if you're eating sashimi and seaweed, good for you. Uh, that's one of the reasons that the Japanese may have a very, uh, and some and many of the Asian cultures that use uh, seaweed may have much more healthy guts and less obesity. Number three, uh, gelatin uh, is, is a great pre a prebiotic. Uh, mushrooms uh, are great prebiotics as well. Now they do contain some carbohydrates, so you have to be careful there. Uh, but the beta, they, they contain what's called a beta glycan, which actually helps to create helps to create a house for bacteria of the gut as well. And lastly, are oligosaccharides, which are things like um, 
chicory root, which is a common sweetener that we use in a ketogenic lifestyle. So all the leafy greens and these other components that we add to the meat, uh, the, the protein and the fat that we're using in the ketogenic lifestyle are what we're finding to be the most stabilizing and beneficial components of a, of a healthy gut microbiome. And so um, to answer the question and make it short and brief and easy, number one, or I should say number 18, reason number 18 of a ketogenic lifestyle, why be in ketosis, is your, this lifestyle helps to stabilize your gut bacteria in many different ways and helps improve things that way. So something to consider there and uh, something to look at. Now, I thought I'd answer a few questions here on this one, uh, on this Periscope. So I didn't um, uh, didn't see where we, So, okay, let me go back here because just Facebook, Facebook Live folks are probably feeling... Um, probably feeling left out. Hello, Sheila. How are you? It's good to see you. And um, let me flip to this screen so I can see all the Periscope stuff. So, uh, all right. So coming in fine um, in North Carolina, not all good here, says Luis. Luis, I don't know what that means, Luis. So tell me, explain what that means. Uh, so, oh, you know what? My uh, per the, my internet has been kind of slow today. So if it's slow, I apologize. Hopefully it's not hanging on you. I'll have to look back and see how this video turned out. Um, all right. Uh, Teresa, hello. How are you from, from Streeter, Illinois? Fantastic. And then hello, Charlotte. And uh, there's Vicki. Oh, yeah. Did you guys know, know that uh, Costco uh, put in some pre-orders for my book? Thanks for notifying us of that, Vicki. Um, hello, uh, Luke from North New Hampshire and Louisa coming in from Ontario. Am I still frozen or did I unfreeze? I don't know if I'm freezing or unfreezing. Um, Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada. Thank you, Lauren, for telling me I'm awesome. Um, you're just making my head swell. All right. Blood ketones are 4.1. Is this too high? No, Cindy, that's not too high. I see people all the way up to six. Uh, and there's Vicky. I'm actually going backwards. So these are comments that came uh, back through. All right. I'm going to flip over here to Periscope and see who's on Periscope. So Let's see, I've got a beg your pardon from Oregon and Linda in Seattle. And uh, thanks for April for putting up the website there. Is homemade kombucha fine? Um, beg your pardon, homemade kombucha in many cases has too much sugar uh, and, and sometimes may have a protein supplement, depending on how you're making it, that may actually kick you out of ketosis. Some people can do okay with kombucha, some people can't. Periscope, they said that Periscope's not freezing. No problem on Periscope. Okay, cool, good. And then Charlotte says that the screen is good and I'm not freezing up here. Thank you, Charlotte. Charlotte, pardon me. Uh, Les says I'm unfrozen now. Hopefully, I didn't. How many? How much did you? How much of that did you get? Did Facebook freeze the whole thing? Um, how much of my um, monologue on um, uh, gut bacteria came through, or did a lot of it freeze? For those of you who've been watching from the beginning. And I guess my question is, if it froze, I may have to repeat some of this information. Uh, hello, Kim. How are you guys? Good to see you. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any, uh, if there's any. So pop a question in there if you have a question. Uh, they see how they if they were frozen. How did they know what they missed? True. If, if it was frozen, how do you know what you meant? Oh, it's it's that it froze. So Susan said it froze for just a split second. Okay, and I'm good. Um, those those of you who watched from the beginning did it did you get a tremendous amount of freeze or the whole or did I do I need to repeat that it was only about five seconds okay perfect so so I'm, I'm, that makes me happy all right we'll we'll pop a few questions in here I have a time to answer a couple questions you guys froze for a second on Facebook all right thanks Vicky um, and Bethany said she heard it all so if you didn't hear the um, the pre and probiotic in, instruction about why a ketogenic diet, diet or lifestyle is one of the best to stabilize the gut bacteria, uh, then, then watch the replay and it'll give you some information there. And I'm going to post this up. Actually, this will auto post to my website at docmuscles.com under the doc, uh, doc talk lives. Uh, and it'll also go to YouTube uh, where the uh, ser the 25 part series is, is uh, in line there uh, for all those. Um, let's see. Somebody just signed in. That's... Um, and Vicky says just froze for a second. Okay. You know, there's a, there's a delay on between my phone and the, and the computer here. So, but not too bad. Is it Aggie 12? Hello. How are you? All right. Is keto good for cardiac patients? Ask Crystal. Um, Crystal, it's one of the best things I've ever seen for cardiac patients. Um, the challenge is you have to help a person understand that in order for the, that cardiac patient to get the benefit, they've got to lower those carbohydrates to less than 20 grams per day. Otherwise, you're just still making vascular disease, if that's the question you're talking about, in regards to um, 
congestive heart failure, many of my congestive heart failure patients have actually had improved squeezing capacity of the heart when they're in ketosis because ketones actually stimulate the squeezing to improve, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and then, oh, let's see. Cindy said only froze for a second. All right, great, thank you. Let's see. Uh, uh, oh, thanks, April. April popped in. This is the location where most of my videos. Uh, if it's if it says Doc Talk Live on it, it rolls to this uh, to this um, link on my on my Facebook page at docmuscles.com. And if you haven't gone there, go check out docmuscles.com. Um, check out the keto cart. Uh, I've put together some packages to help people jumpstart and kickstart their process uh, in the ketogenic lifestyle. Whether you're just beginning or you're hitting a stall and you're struggling to move forward, that's a perfect place to to start and to try to get get that move forward. So go check that out. Um, go check out the freebie page the, on the article on sweeteners. If you've not signed up for my six-part mini series, uh, that's on one of the freebies on there too. Click on that link up. That'll send you out six emails that talk, talk about starting a ketogenic lifestyle and getting started there. Uh, all right, Elise says hello. Uh, Flo says we're unfrozen. All right, how about if you don't have a gallbladder, Janice? I actually talked about a uh, ketogenic lifestyle and not having a gallbladder. Uh, the short and sweet is yes, you can do it without a gallbladder. My wife has been for twelve years for 13 years long as we've been doing it. Um, but I did a whole video series on this. So go to go to the Doc Talk Lives on my doc, on my webpage at docmuscles.com uh, and, and scroll down to see, to see the gallbladder video because I've, I've done one about that. <clears throat> and I'll put that link back up here. This is where you can go to see those. Uh, all right, other questions. Um, let's see, there's the keto cart link. So thanks for putting that up, April. Um, the keto card is where <clears throat> is, is that location where I have a pack packages for uh, 30 days, 90 days, um, six months to get you jump started and move forward in the ketogenic process uh, with the with the components that I actually recommend on top of, of real food. So something to consider there. Uh, so go please go check that out because that that way that's one of the ways that I can help you in that regard, especially if you're stalling out. Ketones at 4.1. The scale didn't move last week, so what am I doing wrong? Cindy doesn't necessarily mean you're doing anything wrong. Um, just because the scale doesn't move doesn't mean you're not getting healthier, losing fat, and gaining muscle. Muscle weighs twice as much as fat. So stop getting on the scale. Take your scale and give it to the neighbor you don't like, and then measure your waist. Um, if you're if you're stalling out, there's usually it's usually because you're gaining muscle, losing fat, you're retaining water. There's a sweetener in your diet or something else going on. But that's what I do in my office. That's how I help people. So if if that didn't answer the question, come see me and we can help that help it out. Um, 90 days is when you start seeing the difference. Yes. So you, what is in, there's a couple of things you're going to see um, for true improvement in, in your, in your metabolic state. It takes about 90 days to really kick in. And so what, the combination of those pieces all together, we start to see the metabolism, we start to see insulin resistance dramatically improve around the 90 day mark. And so that's why that 90 day package is there. And so uh, that's really why it's there. And that's what I, that's why I created these packages to help people number one, get kickstarted at 30 day, and then to really see the effect of this at 90 days. Uh, thanks for asking that Vicki. Um, I do it without a gallbladder. Love it. Takes a little while to get used to. Yes, it actually does. You start out slow is what Flo says, and that's what my wife found. And then it, you work your way up. So fantastic. Does a sulfate and potassium have the potential to make everyone not lose weight? Yes, Ruth. It halts weight loss in everyone that I've ever seen. Um, I have your keto vitamins, but I usually only take three a day instead of six. I never think of taking it twice a day. Is that okay? Well, Danny, that's really related to what you're, what you're, what you're looking for in benefit. If you have neuropathy from uh, prediabetes or diabetes, then increasing up to six to get you the full dose of that methylated folic acid is really important. But if you're just get, trying to get some baseline, um, my vitamins, uh, then, then three to four per day is, is great. And that's uh, how we, how we work it. But, um, it really depends on what your goal is, uh, in that regard. Um, let's see. I'm missing a lot of these questions here. Wow. Uh, it's moving fast. All right. Lots of questions popping up. Let me see if I can catch some of these here. Uh, I joined late says Ada and, uh, s someone I've already asked, but if I want to stop ketones and slowly start incorporating healthy carbs moderately back into my diet on a daily basis, how will that affect my body? Well, Ada, in my book, as an ins a person who's insulin resistant or pre-diabetic, there are no healthy carbs. Um, that, that's that's a misnomer. Um, if you're not insulin resistant, um, then we add them in slowly and work their way your way back up that way. But I but in, for most of the people that I see, adding carbs back in doesn't really help. Now, if you if you hit your goal weight and you're stable, what I would do is you can add a little bit of carbohydrate back until you start to see weight gain again. Then you know what your carbohydrate limit is. I didn't realize methylated folic acid can uh, prevent neuropathy. Yeah, it takes about 60 days for the methylated folic acid to 
um, to really start to see improvement with the, the peripheral neuropathy that occurs in people with insulin resistance and diabetes, uh, Jill, that's something you, 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 I, I see every, I've, that's why I did, that's really the reason I developed vitamins uh, a couple of years ago was because I was looking for a, an inexpensive source of this that had everything that was needed for a ketogenic lifestyle to help the neuropathy because I have so many patients with it. I completely cut out sugar and grains, lost 10 pounds and you're stuck now. Um, yes, beg your pardon. It may be your weight, uh, your, your uh, medications that may be halting that. So that's something you want to look at with your doctor. Uh, it's been two years and starting to gain. Um, again, Melissa, those are some things you want to look at as to what's, what's in your diet currently. Uh, are you insulin resistant? Are you taking in sources of protein that are stimulating insulin or are there other components that are there that are causing a problem? Uh, Jared says, love your site. How long have you found it takes for blood pressure to be affected after starting the keto diet? Well, blood pressure, Jared, is highly related to salt. And I just put, put my uh, a salt uh, blog post up today talking about um, uh, an interesting study that was done in 2001, uh, which is literally 17 years ago, <clears throat> about increasing salt actually lowers your blood pressure and your sugar. Um, but it was ignored by the, the medical, by, by the general medical community. Um, I, I just happened to see it because a colleague ref pointed it out to me and I went, oh my gosh, this is what I've been seeing in my practice for years. And a guy did a study on 21 people. Now it's a very small study and, and so it's, but it's a preliminary uh, study that would help uh, hopefully jump us forward to looking at bigger studies. But this is something that I see every day. Um, I start to see blood pressure improve within two to four weeks of a ketogenic lifestyle. So if you're on blood pressure medication, you really want to talk with your doctor closely about what, what to do with that medication as your blood pressure starts to normalize. A lot of times it needs to be, it needs to be reduced. Um, otherwise, it makes you feel lightheaded and dizzy. Thank you. It makes me wonder why the diet soda ma makers keep putting the sulfur and potassium in the products. Well, number one, it, it, stim it has a better taste than aspartame. Uh, it, it's less, it has less, it has no aftertaste. Um, and it actually stimulates um, the insulin response, which causes the cravings two to three hours later. That's, what, that's, that's usually why they do that, Ruth. Um, or at least that's what I suspect they, that was why they do it. Uh, Michelle, you started keto today. Congratulations. Um, are you part of our kickstart program? Uh, that's a private Facebook group that you can join on to. It's, uh, uh the, the, I'm sorry, the keto clan, K E T O K L A N. Uh, and if you're a part of my membership site or you purchase one of the keto cart packages, uh, you're automatically pulled into that site and we can walk with you, uh, and kind of hold your hands through the month. Uh, you are very welcome, Ida. Uh, I need to regroup, get back on track and up the, uh, I up the carbs and gain 15 pounds. Yuck. Yes, Flo. I get that. Um, will the vitamins help with gastroparesis? Yes, they actually do, Susan. Um, the the uh, gastroparesis, um, they have a little bit of magnesium in them that helps to move that gastroparesis through. through and then the methylated folic acid actually helps the, the, the nervous system of the gut function more effectively too. And it does help that gastroparesis as well. So you go to ketoliving.com and that's where you can find my vitamins. Or if you go to docmuscles.com, click on supplements and it'll take you right there. Um, hello, Melody. How are you? Uh, questions about travel, getting ready to go on a cruise. And I'm concerned about all the prepared foods, not knowing what's in that I'm eating. You know, Kendra, if you're going on a cruise, they, they, it's a, it, I, I've gone on a couple cruises. Uh, they do a low carb cruise with Jimmy Moore. I've been on a few of those and I've never had a problem finding good fats and proteins on those cruises. Usually not a problem at all. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, it's, it's the, it's the sweets that they dangle in front of you that you just have to have some willpower. And if you're, if you're craving the sweets, it means you didn't eat enough fat at the last meal. Um, salt now never used it before. Oh, love salt now. Never used it before, says Ruth. Okay. Uh, blood pressure hasn't gone down. I'm on hydrochlorothiazide and a tenolol um, on a keto diet two years. Flo, you actually talked about a stall. Um, beta blockers like a tenolol commonly stall weight loss. So you need to talk with your doctor about that one. Um, and then somebody pop, pop the link up in there for my salt, um, my last salt uh, comment or my blog post. Pardon me. And I am ignoring the folks at Periscope. Uh, April put it in for keto living. Thanks for doing that, April. Um, all right, let me go back here. Uh, how does wine affect the keto lifestyle? One glass in the evening. Well, remember, white wine is processed. Alcohol is processed just like fructose, which is sugar. It spikes insulin on the back end of the processing between three to five hours after you drink it. Some people it kicks out of ketosis, others it doesn't. Um, so something to be aware of. Um, th thanks for recommending to share this out, Vicky. I appreciate that. Uh, all right, let's see. I'm trying to find let's see any other questions. So, beg your pardon. Says, could it be my calm tea disorder messing with ketosis? Uh, I am not sure. Uh, calm tea. What, what's the acronym for calm tea? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Beg your pardon. I've never heard that acronym before. All right, let me pop on here. <clears throat> 
So do we stay in keto once we've lost the weight and try to maintain? Rebecca, if you're highly insulin resistant, you'll probably stay to some degree of ketosis or low carb. If you're not, you can actually start to work the carbs back up. Um, and that's something that I help people identify uh, in that regard. Uh, what are your observations on birth control pills and their effect on weight loss? Um, well, number one, um, some of the estrogens and progesterones, depending on the strength, can slow weight loss or halt it. Um, so you want to work with your doctor because there are so many different formulations out there. You want to you want a birth control medication that's going to um, do its job, number one, but not give you so much progesterone that it's going to cause weight gain. And that's the one challenge. The older forms had a lot of progesterone and caused a lot of weight gain. Newer forms are less likely to do that. After about one year off, all four blood pressure medications with normal blood pressure again. Fantastic, Michelle. That's awesome. Well, and that's the location for the vitamins. There you go. You are welcome, Susan. Um, I'm trying to catch these questions here. What happens if you find constipation? Heard adding magnesium would help, but it seems too much and can cause problems through your ketosis. Well, actually, magnesium is a natural bowel laxative, so it helps to move the 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 um the stool through the, the gut, number one. Number two, magnesium is a salt. And, and when you're in ketosis, you're going to lose sodium, potassium, magnesium, and zinc. So it's important to replace that magnesium. But too much magnesium will cause you to, to um, lose stool too fast or give you some loose stool. So finding that happy level of magnesium is great. Now, magnesium glycerite is the only one that doesn't cause the loose stools and gives you magnesium as a salt replacement. The other magnesiums, like magnesium oxide or magnesium um, uh Carbonate, those, those that you're going to normally find in the over-counter preparations are great in replacing the magnesium salt, but they make stimulate loose stools. Now, those that are kind of climbing constipation, we work our way up, and it's great. Uh, yes, you get to see me live, Dolly. It's awesome. <clears throat> all right, Kendra says, thanks. Do all blood pressure medicines stall weight loss or only beta blockers? Um, not all of them do. They all have their own little effect, but beta blockers are the worst of the lot. Keto for type 1 diabetics. I have many type 1s that are on keto. We just have to very closely watch their insulin loads and, and make sure that we're giving them adequate insulin for what they're doing. I've been straight. So if you're type 1, what, you need to work closely with your doctor uh, on a ketogenic diet. I've been strict keto for a while. Notice retaining fluids in the lower extremities. Um, no, do not restrict sodium. You, you may not be taking in enough sodium, Tammy, and then there's probably a sweetener in your, in your diet or something stimulated an insulin response that you're unaware of that's causing you to retain those fluids. I just had to get or your thyroids off, Tammy. That's the other question thing you may want to have looked at. I just had a I just had to get a steroid shot Friday for sinus infection. Will this affect ketosis? And it probably it probably will, Sheila. It may it may halt your ketosis for a few weeks. Don't don't worry about it though. Don't fret it because the 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 sinus infection would do that too. So don't worry about it. Um, oh, I missed the metoprolol question. There was a question about uh, does metoprolol halt weight loss? even if I'm in ketosis, uh, it, it can, schistosome, it actually can. Uh, does taking three milligrams of Victoza help weight loss while in keto? It actually does, Bert. Um, I'm a big fan of Victoza. Um, what can I do if I get stuck on the same weight? Come and see me and we'll help you. Um, or go to the, or sign up for the keto cart and get get registered for the keto clan. Um, and with that group is, is real great at helping people work through those, those stalls. So progesterone only birth control is the worst. Not necessarily, Danny, but progesterone only can stimulate some challenges with um, with uh, weight loss. So it, it, there's a, there's a, there's a there's a fine line there, and that's where you want to work with your doctor about that. Um, how much magnesium? As much as you need, Cheryl. Uh, there, there, there's no there's no set limit. Um, can taking magnesium and zinc at the same time be an issue? No, it's like, I actually. The, they do. There is some issue about this receptors binding, um, but it, there's no. There's no. If you're doing adequate doses, and I'm not talking about big doses, I'm talking about adequate doses to hit your RDA, then you're fine. Um, all right, Tracy says I'm informative. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate that. All right, what causes fasting glucose to be high in more normal rest today? Fasting glucose to be high in more normal rest. I'm not quite sure what that question means, Dolly. Dolly, mommy. Um, more normal rest. What does that mean? Um, great, great questions, though. Uh, clarify that one for me. And I. And Facebook may have frozen for a moment. Oh, hopefully not. All right. Hey, Adam. Uh, Adam number one is on here. Um, I am. I am Adam. Adam Tech uh, on Periscope uh, just joined us. Um, bacon and uh, bacon and pecans to you, my friend. Um, and the two of us together, when we're on P Facebook or Periscope, uh, we're often called Adam squared. Um, he's the, he's the techie guy. I'm the medical guy. Um, and, uh, it, it makes life lots of fun, especially when there's bacon around. Um, 
All right, let's see here. High intensity interval training while in ketosis. I recommend it. Yes, um, I, I think it's one of the best ways to help imp improve um, insulin resistance. Uh, Tim says not f not frozen. Tim, are you related to the Tim Conway that I used to watch as a kid on Carol Burnett? Um, that, that's what I want to know. Is it is it not harmful to take so much, too much magnesium? Um, Ruth, the magnesium is a, is a salt that you naturally lose in ketosis. So adding it back is, is essential. Um, too much of it will give you the, it will give you diarrhea and you'll spend a wonderful evening, uh, getting to know the porcelain throne. So you, when you get to too much, that's what ends up happening. And you know, you know, it's too much. Um, Tim says, no, but I wish I was, I wish you were too. That would be great. You could start giving some, doing some, uh, some great, um, monologues and one-liners for us. What causes glucose 135, but more normal the rest of the day? Um, are you talking about a morning glucose, Dolly Mommy? So are you saying you checked your glucose first thing in the morning in the morning and it was 135, or you checked it later in the day? I know it's 135. That's that's the, that's a question. Um, Bacon Adam Squared says, I'm a oh, fantastic. What, that's, that was the question, glucose question. How was my Super Bowl treats? You know what? I am so sick of the NFL. I didn't even watch the Super Bowl. Um, so instead, I read a good book, um, worked on one of my, my blog posts, um, read my scriptures, and smoked some amazing ribs. And uh, it was great. Then I watched Then I watched a five-minute highlight video today of the Super Bowl, and my life's complete. So it was great. Um, should we take ox bile if you don't have a gallbladder? It can help Janice. There's no problem with it. I won't, well, many people don't need it, but some people do and they love it. Dwarf on keto. That is exactly, Tim, what we should be looking at. So Tim Conway, I think you need to do dwarf on keto. That would be perfect. I would watch you. Are you still drinking Diet Dr. Pepper? No, I stopped drinking Diet Dr. Pepper about five, six weeks ago and I, and I'm doing great. It's actually fantastic. Um, no problem. There's op, they're, they're the opposite though, even though taking 600. I'm not quite sure what that means, Ruth. Uh, no problem there. The opposite, though, still even taking 600 milligrams. The opposite of what? Can I drink Coke Zero? I would avoid it like the plague, Monica. It contains two sweeteners that will kick you out of ketosis and cause you to gain weight every time. Um, that would be a great Super Bowl plan, says Happy Mom. Dawn effect? Oh, Jill is asking about uh, 135. Uh, it could it could be a, if it's a morning blood sugar of 135 and then it's normal the rest of the day. It could be a down effect. Um, it could be that you bottomed out overnight. You're taking medicines that did it, um, or it could be that you ate something that was that contains more carbohydrate than you're aware of in the evening, and your and your sugar's coming down. Um, that either of those could do it. Um, Dwarf on keto with bacon boy. There you go, Adam. That would be awesome. Fasting glucose up, but normal glucose the rest of the day. So remember, Dolly, if you're you're probably pre pre diabetic or diabetic, um, while you're still insulin resistant, that morning number may be higher in the morning. Now, if you are diabetic and you're having blood sugars of one thirty five, and that worries me that you might be, um, one of your medicines may be too strong the night before, and you need to talk to your doctor about that because um, it can cause a down effect. Had radical hysterectomy is keto good for me? Um, you know, Moriana, the, the patients that have had radical hysterectomies, it's the best thing for most of the patients I've had. It helps stabilize their moods, their um, hot flashes. It really helps uh, with a lot of those things. It's been very beneficial that way. Uh, if there is a commercial for the food item, don't consume it. <laughs> That's a good rule of thumb. Very good. Uh, good rule of thumb. I like that one. All right. This is a, you guys are asking some great questions here. I am trying to uh, make sure I'm not missing any of them. All right. Nomads, says Dolly Mommy. If you have a morning sugar of 135 and you're on Nomads, then I suspect you may be on the cusp of diabetes or diabetic, and you might be needing to chat with your doctor about something to help control that blood sugar in the morning as you use you, as a, you use a ketogenic diet through that process. Uh, if you if you were a patient of mine and you're in my office, we would look to see what's your what's your A1C test. Then we would talk about your diet to make sure it's bringing it in t tightly, and then we may want to add on something to help control those sugars if necessary. Uh, but those are, there's a number of different approaches we could use with that, Dolly. But that that does bother me a little bit, and you may want to have your doc check you out. Um, how much magnesium can be, should be taken each day? Mary, I would say as much as you need. Again, I'm not going to answer that question directly because it varies for each person. Is 0.6 millimoles the minimum for nutritional ketosis? Uh, 0.5 is, but I often see a lot of people don't lose weight until they hit 0.7. Uh, thank you for the hearts and shares. Yes, I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Opposite of the runs still have constipation. A lot of my friends do too. 
with taking extra magnesium. I was in stage three CKD, so I'm cautious. Um, the, the, the constipation may be then related to other things than Ruth. Medic medications can do it. Uh, you may not be taking enough fiber, um, and you're probably not taking enough um, coconut oil uh, because that often helps dramatically. So I would slowly increase the amount of coconut oil. Um, to, if, if I have patients that are doing a ketogenic lifestyle and they're still having constipation, uh, then you're not eating enough fat. That's usually my rule of thumb, and that usually solves the problem. What vitamins should we be taking every day on this diet? Um, that's why I developed my diet, my, my vitamin called the Keto Essentials Vitamin at KetoLiving.com. That's the one I recommend. I designed it specifically for ketosis. And you can find that at KetoLiving.com. It's the Keto Essentials Vitamin. Why did you stop drinking Diet Dr. Pepper? Ruth, I did a, peris I did a Periscope and a Facebook Live um, a couple weeks back about why, specifically how aspartame also affects the gut bacteria. Uh, we talked about gut bacteria here, and, but it actually affects it in, in the long run. And there was a study that came out just recently about that. And so I decided I would stop it because it seems to propagate insulin resistance uh, over the long haul. And one of the things I noticed is my insulin levels are still staying a little higher. And I never was bringing those insulin levels down. And I wondered if it was the aspartame. So I've stopped it to see over a two-month period of time what happens that way. And thanks for putting that in April uh, on the website there. That's the, that for the ones asking for the vitamins, that's where you can find the vitamins at. Uh, you are welcome, uh, Rebecca. Uh, let's see here. I think I got all the questions. So happy mom is proud of me for giving up the pop. Um, my wife is too. So uh, yes, it, I, I'm, I'm proud of me for giving up the pop. I've given up pop three times in my life, my lifetime. Um, every time I go to a medical conference, though, some of them are now, and I'm probably going to offend somebody who speaks at a medical conference. Some of them are so boring. The speakers are so boring that you're you're falling asleep. And so you reach out and you grab the closest caffeine to find yourself. And that's how I get re-addicted to this diet soda, usually diet of pepper. Um, and so I've decided that I'm not doing that ever again. Um, I'm And I don't drink coffee either. So I'll, it'll probably be caffeinated exogenous ketones is what I'll end up doing. Oh, all right. <laughs> you guys are asking some great questions. Rebecca says I should stop drinking diet Dr. pepper too. Rebecca, I am I am encouraging it. Yes, the Humira shot can cause high blood pressure. Um, yes, uh, Humira can raise blood pressure a little bit. Yes, because of what it's doing to the uh, Im immune system. But Humira, can, you want to talk to your doctor because Humira is an important drug that that you want to really consider using versus not using. And there's a pros and cons to that. Best time to test ketones with the keto meter um, whenever you question if whether or not you're in ketosis, Jane, David. Um, that's when I would do it. All right. You know, amazingly, we've been going here now for, um, I can't see my clock. Where's the clock on this thing? How long have we been running here? Um, we've been, well, at least 18, well, probably it feels like more longer than 18 minutes, but, um, anyway, we've been running for quite a while here and, um, there's been no trolls. I'm amazed. Can can this way of eating cause appendicitis? No, it will not cause appendicitis. Um, appendicitis is caused by a whole slew of other issues. Uh, but if you think you have appendicitis, you need to go see your doctor right away. Can you help me explain to people in one of my keto groups why alcohol is not a great idea while trying to stay in ketosis? Um, Holly, you can try, but people love alcohol. And when I say it, I get ostracized from the group. Um, but it, it, I, I, I see people the do alcohol and it kicks them out of ketosis all the time. Um, I've actually talked about alcohol and how it affects the ketosis on a number of my blog posts in the past and also my, my periscopes. Um, basically, it's processed just like fructose, which is half of a sugar molecule. And that's the really easy nuts and bolts of it. Um, but when I tell people that, they get mad and that because I'm taking away their alcohol and their only vice and they get upset at me. Um, and so they go drink alcohol uh, without me, which is fine because I don't drink alcohol. I totally missed the Dr. Pepper. Uh, oh, yes. Look for that one. All right. I'm, let me see if I got to be. Let's see. That answers Holly's question. Oh, we're at 32 minutes now. That's a whole lot longer than 18 minutes, isn't it? All right. A1C dropped from 9 to 5.5 in January. And the total cholesterol went from 207 to 93. Congratulations, Bert. That's awesome. Um, 9 to 5.5 on the A1C is phenomenal. You're reversing your diabetes. Congratulations. Uh, you are welcome, Holly. I hope that answers it. It's a brief question, but hopefully that'll get it for you. I checked ketones two times a day with the meter, says happy mom. Good. Um, it, 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 you, you really, you just want to know, am I in ketosis with this particular, at this particular time? And you would want to know that because you want to know what, what did that activity do to you or what did that food meal before do it to you? And then second, um, is the, is the meal that you just ate kicking you out of ketosis? And those are all reasons to look at it. 
All right. Happy mom. Have a great evening. Um, I need to go as well. My wife's probably wondering where I am. Uh, so I will answer with this one last question. Been eating bad for a couple weeks and after one day back in keto. You know, Brian, if you if you're not horribly insulin resistant, yes, you can pop back into ketosis pretty quickly. If you're insulin resistant, it may take up to a week to get back into ketosis. And so it sounds like you're you you've improved your metabolism, so it, it probably is correct. I'm liking Zevia and I checked only stevia. Tammy, this has been an interesting question because I've had myself included and a couple other patients that emailed me um, told me that the Zevia kicks them out of ketosis. Uh, when you look at the, the sweetener, it's, it's Zevia extract. Now, if you look up Zevia extract and they capitalized it, which makes me think it's the Splenda version, Splenda's version of Zevia extract actually contains maltodextrin or dextrose, at least as far as I could find. Now, if I'm wrong on that, I'm sure the Splenda people will be sending me hate mail, but the, the, um, it kicks me out of ketosis and it kicks a couple of patients out of ketosis. And so I'm wondering if their Zevia extract, their Stevia extract in the Zevia, contains one of those sweeteners in it and it's just not being listed on the on the on the bot the uh, the um can or the bottle because i i like the taste of zevia but i have it kicks me out of ketosis now other people are fine with it um so so but i've never recommended zevia for that reason um just just for what for what it's worth i'd be curious for those that are using zevia um are you actually checking your ketones and does it kick you out um, because that's one of the questions I have. Now, one person said it was just like the black cherry was the only one that did that to her. Um, I don't know if it's a different it's a specific brand or not, uh, or specific flavor or not that's doing it. Is the keto diet okay for Lyme disease? Um, it would be it would be the first approach I'd make to Lyme disease, yes. Um, if it were me and I had Lyme disease, yes, um, it would be the first approach I make uh, to it. Can the keto diet improve lept leptin resistance? That is the second thing that improves with a ketogenic diet. And I talked about that as one of the uh, 25 parts. So yes, Holly, it, it dramatically improves leptin resistance. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Have a great evening. Remember to keep the fat high, keep the carbs low, and pass the bacon. And go to my website, check out docmuscles.com, check out the keto cart, check out the freebies that we've got there. Go to the keto clan on Facebook uh, and register so you can become a part of that, that group. Uh, and, and I'll see you online somewhere and probably tomorrow. So have a great night. And again, pass the bacon. Have a good night. Bye-bye.